Okay, so our, our next presentation, uh, we have Dr. William Westerville and Claire Lewis and Rowan Grantham here to talk to us about adjusting irrigation attitudes through collaboration. What am I missing? Oh, oh, it stopped. Mm, that's right. I'm sorry. Just one more moment. Just click on it. When I click on it twice, it goes out. Thank you, Emily. Emily is, you know, the brains behind all of this. So, <laughs> yeah. I think if you hit the hide, it might be both. There we go. Okay. So, yes. Okay. Thank you. Hi. Thank you all for um, sticking with us today at the end. We're the last one finishing this up. And uh, I'm really happy to be here today. Um, and talk about this great collaboration that, that we worked on together. Um, and I guess I don't need to introduce myself, but the project that I'm gonna talk about today is in Wellington, which is a community in Hernando County um, and Spring Hill. So we did an irrigation and landscape retrofit in this community. And um, so, you know, we'll go ahead and we'll talk about the different parts of that. Um, Okay, thank you. <laughs> so I really love that this was such a collaboration and this is really why I wanted to talk about it because I think the more that we all work together and pull our all our resources together, the you know bigger impact that we can have. Um, so the Wellington community, we had we had the buy-in from the whole community, which is really important. Um, we had the, the residents, we had the HOA um, managers, the board managers, um, the property manager, and, um, and then we worked with Southwest Florida Water Management District, um, and they were the funding agency and they were the project managers on this. Um, so without their help, none of this would have happened. Um, we also worked with UFIFS Hernando County and the Florida Friendly Landscaping Program. And we really ensured that the plant selection um, and installation and um, the maintenance, all the guidelines were followed. The UFIFS um, guidelines were followed. Um, Hernando County Utilities was a great partner in this. They identified this community as the highest water using community in Hernando County. Um, and they also um, helped us with the water um, savings and analytics, um, both before the installation and then after the project was complete. Um, Rado Lawn Service and Sunshine State um, Sprinklers Systems, they were um, the landscape maintenance and irrigation maintenance company for this community. And so without their help and really kind of their buy-in and investment in this project, I don't think the project would have worked either. So all of us working together were what made this project a great success. Um, I'm gonna show a quick video on this and uh, cause I think you'd rather watch the video than, than hear me talk. <laughs> This is the Wellington Turf Plot Project within Hernando County. Currently within the Wellington community, the turf is suffering from a disease called take all root rot. With this disease, the residents are having to replace their turf on nearly an annual basis. Got this a lot of money and water bills, uh, you know, when you put new sod in, and of course you're almost watering on a daily basis. They were identified through Hernando County Utilities as one of the highest water using communities. <laughs> The Wellington Turf Plot Project is entirely funded by the district as part of the Conservation Education Program. My name is Robin Grantham. I'm a lead communications coordinator for the Water Management District. We replaced the existing St. Augustine grass with the hay up because the hay is less susceptible to take out root rot and also requires less water and chemicals, as well as some Florida-friendly landscaping plants. The district has partnered with Hernando County and the University of Florida. So these plans are going to conserve water by expanding the landscape bed and installing micro irrigation in the landscape bed. And then it will be using water efficient irrigation heads out in the turf area. So the use of water should go down drastically. I'm Claire Lewis, I'm with the University of Florida Florida Friendly Landscaping Program. It's 
is certainly going to be a welcome improvement for us. This is a pilot project. This is a new program at the district in which we work with our utilities to provide them support that they can use to educate their residents about water conservation. Anything that would contribute to saving the resources and natural resources is ever going to be. From my point of view, it just looks beautiful. I couldn't be more pretty. This project ultimately is going to be reducing water use and helping to ensure a strong water supply for future generations to come. Okay. There we go. All right, so thanks for, for watching that. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, I'm gonna next go through a really short um, timeline of the project. Let's see if I can just use this. Um, we started the project in July of 2019, and I'm gonna click through all these for trying to time manage here. Um, we started in 2019 and we started out with a planning meeting and a community workshop. Um, and the workshop was really to introduce the residents to the, the issue, you know, the, the take all root rot and, and how to deal with this issue rather than just replacing the turf. Um, and also to let them know what the requirements were for um, participating in this project. Then we selected the participants and we did the landscape design. Um, and, um, you know, kind of skipping through, it took about two years. And then by July of 2021, we were collecting the final results and the water savings. There. Um, and part of that planning meeting um, was, you know, to go over what the requirements were. And so that the participants needed to um, review the design and, and finally, you know, approve it. Um, they also had to agree to not making any changes to their landscapes once it was installed. Um, and we have, you know, to the front landscapes, which is where we were making the changes to. Um, also, they had to agree to having site visits by both the HOA and from Swift Mud to evaluate the landscape and irrigation systems in place. Um, and they also had to agree to have, um, you know, educational signage and, and interpretive signage um, installed in their landscape. So pretty straightforward on that. Um, and how these, these homes were selected was, um, um, first of all, we wanted to look at the health of the turf. So, um, you know, we didn't want to replace any healthy turf. We looked for, for landscapes that were experiencing the take all root rot. Um, we wanted really visible sites. So once we made these changes, we wanted, you know, people to be able to drive through the neighborhood and actually be able to see the landscapes where we made the changes. And then we were also looking for the high water users. So those were the criteria we, we evaluated the landscapes on. And once we picked them out, um, we um, met with them. Um, Robin and I went and met with the homeowners. We talked to them about what they wanted to see in their landscapes, you know, what types of plants they liked. Um, and then we, we developed a, a conceptual landscape plan. We met with them again and, you know, went over the plan, make sure that, you know, made any changes if they wanted to see something different. And, um, and then finally, you know, presented them with, you know, a final plan for their approval. Um, then in March of 2020, we sent out a, a pre-survey to find out what their landscape and irrigation kind of, um, you know, you know, what they were using in their landscape and also kind of what they thought about their landscape and irrigation practices. And I think the key to um, this slide right here for me was um, we decided to do a mailed out survey to, to collect these responses. And um, we did that after talking to the HOA president um, and where he said, you know, through their experience with this community, they really got a lot better results by doing a mail out rather than any kind of online form. So the takeaway for me is really know your audience. If you have these insights, you know, you know, go ahead and use those. Um, and so we sent out, you know, just over a thousand um, surveys and we got 601 back, which is a 54% response rate, which is really great. Um, and then, as you can see also on this slide, that the total for these four landscapes was, you know, $17,541 with, um, you know, each house costing, you know, just over $4,000 a piece. And uh, I think this is you. Yeah. Okay, so at this point, Hernando County Extension got very involved in this project because I've always had a very good working relationship with the Wellington 
I've been invited many times to go out and speak with some of their different groups and uh, clubs there, talk on different lawn and garden topics. But we got very involved because um, in July and August, we went ahead and put, actually put the landscape in and installed the signs. And what happened was we told the residents, the people participating in this program, that if you have any questions or problems with your new turf grass, the new Florida friendly plantings, just give us a call and we'll come out and look at it and we'll figure it out. And they called. So on a pretty regular basis, I'd have to meet with Robin and also with the um, owner of the landscape company. And we'd meet with the residents and we'd look over their questions, their problems. We didn't have any really major issues. It was more handholding kind of because the Bahia lawns were different from the St. Augustine lawns, like what they had been used to. Um, worked with the uh, landscape management company on how to properly care for Bahia grass, as opposed to St. Augustine grass. And they did a surprisingly good job of it. The turf grass, I was out there just maybe a month or so ago at the end of winter and it still looked very, very good. They've been doing a very good job. Now this year, it was unusually hot in the, um, early spring and early summer, and it took a little bit longer than normal for the um, plant materials to establish and the turf grass to establish also. So we had to tell people to be patient a little bit, but everything came in and we had to really work with them to make sure that they understood that the St. Augustine turf they have now is different, for, or the Bahia turf they have now is different from the St. Augustine turf that they used to have that they're having problems with. So we wanted to go ahead and put together a workshop for the residents to answer any questions that anybody who was familiar with it had, and also to kind of ensure that the entire neighborhood would be aware of what was going on. We had planned on doing this in person, but of course COVID kind of interfered with those plans. So we had to do a virtual workshop. We did send out information, and this is the picture here is from um, our local newspaper, the Hernando Sun. We got a very good write-up on it, and we got a lot of information out there to the general public. Um, we did promote the virtual workshop really well, and the video that you watched just a few minutes ago has had almost 1,200 views on YouTube, so it's gotten a lot of exposure also. So after we did all this work and we had the virtual workshop and explained everything to the entire community, we had to take a hard look at exactly how we we're going to evaluate all this and what were we going to measure so that we could go back to the homeowners association and the entire neighborhood and share it with them to show that it was successful and hopefully get even more of them to kind of jump on board. So we'll have Robin talk here about uh, evaluation. Hello. My portion of the project here with Swift Mud was really to evaluate the effectiveness of it. So that included two components. So we've got the, the behavior change components, the social research portion of that. So come July, we waited about two years. Remember the, the project initially started 2019. Now we got two years later in July is when we started to both do a post survey to analyze any changes in the residents' perspectives. And that's also when we decided to evaluate um, water savings resulting from the project because we wanted to have a full one year worth of data minus the establishment period. So on our post, say, per post survey, again, our response rate was amazing. We got 41% of the surveys returned from the community residents. Now within the community itself, about 30% of the residents maintained their own landscapes and the remaining 70% actually had their landscapes maintained through the HOA, which was radial, or radial landscape and sunshine irrigation. And we decided intentionally to only do the installations of the new landscapes on those homes in which we could control um, the contractors' behaviors with those landscapes. So after the project, we had 60% of those who maintain their own landscape now supported that community rules should allow for grass that requires less water. Previously, that was around 30%. We also had 75% of those that had to follow HOA that use the HOA landscapers. They now um, agreed with grass that allows less water. 
And then 89% of all of those that took the survey uh, prefer replacing poorly performing turf with grass requiring less water. And again, keep in mind that this was poorly performing turf, that St. Augustine was not doing well and being replaced annually. Um, also, of those who took the survey, 26% of those that maintain their own landscape, and then 40% of those that had HOA maintained landscapes went out to all the homes and checked out the project. Oh, I didn't realize I can look this way. That doesn't hurt my neck nearly as much. <laughs> So we had four homes in the project. What was really disappointing though, was we were really only able to analyze the water use of three of those four homes. And we're gonna go why and lessons weren't learned a little bit more. But one of those homeowners, um, something happened with the newly installed the hay grass in the front yard. We couldn't really get consensus because there were a lot of disagreements about what happened with that turf, but we had to completely reinstall it. So then we had four months of establishment period. Also within this same home, that homeowner made, homeowner made significant changes to all of their backyard landscaping. And that also impacted um, water use of that house. So because of that, we did need to take them out as an outlier. But then of those three homes, um, what we found was on average, there was a 25% reduction in the water use of those homes. So that was really great to say. And when we did that 25% reduction, we did have to take into account that when the landscapes were installed, that was a really dry time of year. So our, our water supply staff finagled numbers with that. Lesson learned. Um, number one, the participant agreement needs to specify that the homeowner cannot make changes anywhere in the landscape. We had only put, you can't make changes where we're working on the project, but it needed to say they can't do anything in the landscape, even the backyard. On these lessons learned, I'm going to show you the pre and post photos because they're fabulous. Claire and Bill did such a good job. So this shows on the, the left side there. Is that your left? Yeah. That's dead take all root rot on the St. Augustine, and that was replaced with juniper and mulch. This is what we did on most of those right away areas. And then this also, again, you see all that lovely looking St. Augustine that they were actually fighting to keep in the community. And now you can see the extended plant bed and that beautiful bahia. Lesson two, uh, what we would do next time around is previously it was residents that had the project done could just call and we would go out anytime they had a question. That did not use our time efficiently. So effectively me and Bill were there almost every week for quite some time. Um, so what we would say is moving forward, we recommend if you wanted to do this type of project that you would schedule with the homeowners and the landscape contractor and irrigation contractor, like a quarterly site visit to all meet together. And again, we've got some more pre and post here. You see on the top, really no, no plant bed at all, dead turf. Underneath that, Claire did such a great job with these designs, beautiful plant bed, the hair grass. And then this is the other side of that landscape, the difference between that St. Aug and the Bahia. Lesson three, as you recall, I did say that one of the homeowners made a lot of changes and couldn't be included in the study. What is really important is that you talk to the landscape and irrigation contractors and say, you know this resident, is this going to be someone that is going to have a positive working relationship or are you going to have a lot of challenges? Um, again, that's a lesson learned and that's the value of this, you know, things that you want to keep an eye out for. And this is another one of those landscapes. On the left, you see there's really no plant bed around that palm at all, extended plant bed, FFL signage, and that juniper. And then again, on the left, you got the same type of thing. It looks so much better. And finally, lesson four, and this is obviously, this is a pilot. So I'm really excited for this product to be repeated again and be much more successful. Every time you do it, it should be a little bit better than the time before. And this is the last of the four homes. You see that right away. And then here it was again, just all dead St. Aug and extended those plant beds through one side of the home. These are, this is the bottom line, kind of the successes of the project, if you will. We saw that 25% decrease on average of water use uh, pre versus post. After the project, the HOA amended their deed restrictions. So now Bahia grass isn't allowed in, in all homes. They added additional uh, Florida-friendly landscaping language to the deed restrictions. And the reason why they waited till after the project is they wanted to see if their residents would support it. 
And that's really where that say that survey came in handy for them. And then also moving forward, anytime turf needs to be replaced in this community, um, the whole, like if it's the whole area and not just patches, they're now requiring that turf to be replaced with the hay grass instead of St. Augustine. And then lastly, a little separate from this is uh, the HOA was so happy with the project and working with Swift Mud and the local extension office that they went ahead and partnered with us on another project through our RISE program where we provided grant funding and we went through and renovated their common areas and improved all their irrigation systems, made it more efficient for them. And that's it. We're on it. <laughs> Amazing project, thank you. Um, is the idea to eventually ask them if that's the hay? I saw it had more efficient irrigation, but to try to get them to turn that irrigation off. Ultimately, actually, that's what we are working toward. Um, and a key part of that, too, is like, oh, I'm sorry, I need to repeat the question. She was wondering if ultimately it was just about, you know, switching over from St. Augustine to Bahia, but then ultimately to get them to turn that irrigation off in the Bahia. For this type of community, that irrigation, because they have a high expectation of green everywhere, the benefit of this is the irrigation company and the landscape company work together to adjust those run times significantly. And like during the summer months when it was raining more, they really adjusted those run times down and didn't water nearly as much. And in the winter times, they were also able to decrease the run times, but there's not a likelihood that they would just flat out turn it off. I know that my grado, their contractor there wants to see that happen and he is discussing that with the HOA, but we'd have to see down the road. Is that it? Oh, um, hey, Ann. Hey. Uh, so your design criteria, was it based on water star? No, well, actually it was in a little bit because we, <sighs> he wanted to, uh, Ed was asking whether the design criteria was based off of a program called Florida Water Star, which is a program that Deirdre Irwin and I manage with the water management districts. It was and it was not Ed. And that's because we weren't looking at the entire landscape. We only retrofitted the front yards. But what we did with the front yards was Florida Water Star. So um, we took the square footage of the entire front yard and said of this 100% irrigated area, we only allowed 60% with high volume irrigation on the turf grass. And then the remaining 40% had to be plant bed with micro irrigation. And also we use MP rotators in the turf grass area um, to just because they're a little bit more efficient of a head. So yes, to that aspect in the front yards, we did Florida Water Star. Good question. Okay, so I have a question. We discussed no questions before I came up here. <laughs> then there are a whole lot of other cultural maintenance issues going on. It's not just because the car is there and that's, that's it. I mean, it's, you get that, that affects turf grass because the turf grass is stressed due to other reasons. So if they're having year after year to replace that St. Aug, it's, you know, there's a lot of other things going on. So was there any kind of an educational program with them to teach them how to properly maintain the existing turf grass or was it just assumed it's because of St. Augustine and then we're pulling it out. Miss Susan just had a lovely question. Uh, she is wondering about the fact that if the St. Augustine turf grass is needing to be replaced on an annual basis, that's probably a larger issue, not only related to the takeout root rot, but how that St. Augustine turf is being maintained. And I'm really excited to invite Dr. Bill Luster back to the stage. <laughs> Susan, thank you very much for asking that. Um, that's a very good point because I've worked with this neighborhood for a number of years and they do have a huge problem with take all root rot. It gets spread from yard to yard by the lawn services, the equipment. They cut the grass too short. I told them that for years. They have always believed that more fertilizer and more water 
would overcome the problem and their lawns would look green and beautiful and life would be wonderful. Kept trying to tell them, no, it doesn't work like that. So they got in this downward cycle where they just get, take all root rot so bad, the lawns were having to be replaced literally every year. So even though I kept trying to convince the service, cut the grass high, fertilize it less, you don't need to water it, you know, nearly as much as you are, they wouldn't listen. And this was kind of, it got to the point where they're spending literally hundreds of thousands of dollars as a community with the homeowner's fees having to replace lawns. It got to the point where they were open to a new way of looking at things, to put it nicely. Yes, no, they've been maintained. No, well, St. Augustine, they're really not cutting it as high as they should. The Bahia, they're cutting it, they're cutting it high. The Bahia actually, they haven't killed the Bahia, it still looks good. Yeah. 